right, what's up everyone? Welcome to another Team Kitchen Fable video. Jacob here and I'm joined by my teammate Steven. And uh, today we are gonna be talking about the Uprising Sealed format. And specifically, uh, Steven was in Las Vegas last weekend and he participated in the Uprising World premiere. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about how that went, Steven? I mean, it, it went fantastic. Uh, I went uh, six and O. Oh. Yeah, in the world premiere, getting myself a yep. nice box as a prize. They're doing that now, which is really, really cool. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, went real well. Uh, 6-0. <laughs> yeah, that's super exciting. Uh, some of you guys may remember that Steven had a video on the channel when Tales of Ari came out, and he also went 6-0. and He's a very humble guy, but uh, two 6-0s oh. at uh, Las Vegas world premieres is super awesome. And uh, of course, we're glad to have him on the team. So uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and hop into... Uh, what it's like to play Uprising Sealed. So I'm going to mm -hmm. hop into TTS. And uh, Steven, why don't you start off with uh, just kind of what we're looking at with our sealed pool. Yeah. Uh, so one of the first things uh, I like to do uh, when setting up a sealed pool is just uh, organizing it in a way that's easy for me to understand. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, one of my preferences. And uh, I think it'll help to really kind of understand where you're going to go. Uh, so there's only three heroes in this set, and on top of that, we have Draconic cards, which uh, are be able to be used by Dromai and Phi, two of the heroes, and Generic cards are being able to use by uh, everybody, uh, all three. Um, there's also Ice cards and uh, Wizard cards, but since there's only one hero that can use them, you can just have uh, one pile of them. So the idea is to have Ice, Wizard cards in one pile, Ninja, and Draconic Ninja cards in one pile, Illusionist, Ill Draconic Illusionist cards in one pile, Draconic one pile, and Generic pile. So you have five total piles right here. Um, and on top of that, uh, to, to kind of explain the little arrows here, is kind of what I think the matchup spread looks like in the sealed format. So I think hmm. Icelander pretty much beats Phi, Phi beats Dromai, and then Dromai beats Icelander. So that's kind of the setup that we're looking for here. Yeah, a lot of people were worried that... Um with the like asymmetry of the sealed format where there, there's two heroes that kind of share draconic stuff and then Icelanders over there on their own. Uh, you uh -huh. feel like generally they did pretty good with the cyclical nature. It's not just like um, draconic beats ice and, and then ice has a hard time or vice versa. Exactly. No, I think they did a really good job. They had, they kind of made up the, uh, their own mini uh, circle of, uh, you know, matchups right mm. in the sealed format or any, um limited format so that's yeah. not really an issue uh, i think it works really well yeah and i mean having these uh having these five piles to organize your sealed pool in is very mm -hmm. nice i think in tales of aria there was like how many how many mm -hmm. piles could you make in a tales of aria sealed pool it was like seven or eight because yeah. <laughs> you had like uh yeah all the elements all their special cards then you also had a small generic pool it yeah. was it was a little nuts yeah it was definitely insane so mm -hmm. uh after the uh, initial kind of overview of what the sealed environment looks like, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into your sealed pool. And we're going to first start with the heroes that you did not pick. So let's uh, look at those. Yep. So what are we looking at here? Let's start with uh, Icelander here, what she does, mm -hmm. and uh, why I didn't choose her in this specific sealed pool. So Icelander says over here, uh, if it's not your turn, you may play a blue non-attack action card from your arsenal as though they were instant. And uh, and whenever you play an ice card during an opponent's turn, you create a frostbite token under their control. Um, so real quickly here about uh, some of the matchups. So uh, Icelander uh, is really good against Phi because Phi usually likes to have a red heavy deck. Um, so doing arcane damage really sticks, and frostbite makes it really easy, uh, dip more mm. like difficult for Phi to play their cards. Uh, on the other hand, for Icelander and Dramai, uh, Icelander needs a very specific set of cards to be able to beat uh, Dromai, and that card is the one right over here in the edge here called Singe, um, because the little dragons can kind of get out mm. of control, and I'll, I'll look at them in a second. Um, the little dragons can get kind of out of control, especially because they have Arcane Barrier, and it'll be really easy without you a big damage burst to really get through to Dromai. Um, but if you have enough Singes, uh, so what do you want to look at in... Uh, with Icelander, if you have enough Singes, you'll actually be pretty good against Dromai, and uh, it might be a mm. good reason to just go for Icelander. And you also want to kind of look at your blue count. So the main reason I didn't go with Icelander, because my blue count was kind of really low. As you can see, you got one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six-ish that I could uh, honestly play. 
And uh, uh, as we'll see a bit later, my generic pool didn't have any uh, exciting blues to really take advantage of uh, mm. Icelander's play style here. Uh, as you can see, I did get a Majestic called Insidious Chill. Uh, that's right there. I wonder if I have to change the color. Um, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, it cost a lot, um, which is the unfortunate amount. Uh, but I didn't really get enough cards to really synergize with that effect. Um, yeah, I have to say Insidious Chill has felt very strong and oppressive, at least in testing. We were playing mm -hmm. it on stream the other day, and it's a super great effect. But do you feel like it's it's a little bit underpowered in sealed unless your pool is just extremely oriented around taking advantage of it? Mm -hmm. Exactly, especially in sealed. I think in draft, you can get a little bit more mileage out of it because you're actually attempting to get the blue count that you want. Um, and the enough fusion cards to make uh, the effect really worth it to run. Um, but kind of in a sealed environment, you kind of have to get the, the uh, too much of a specific pool and it's too much of an ass for it to just work naturally. Yeah, That's where I'm that makes sense a lot. So just to recap, you want to be looking for blues, specifically mm -hmm. ice cards that you can play on your opponent's turn, which is blue ices, or if you have any ice cards that you can play at instant speed. I don't know if that exists. But uh, uh, yeah, there's some so, there's some effects like this cold snap that you could have in blue, um, which is mm. fine. There's one called Arctic Incarceration that literally just says create a frostbite token under their control, yeah. and it's just you know fine. It also synergizes pretty well with the weapon, which we don't have here, but uh, the weapon is called Waning Moon. Um, it'll deal three damage on the opponent's turn if you if you play an on attack action, you can activate it, and it costs two. Uh, so it actually is a pretty Icelander is actually pretty um, grindy and more than a bursty wizard, uh, mm. as we've seen in the past, like Kano, that can kind of burst you down. But Islander can kind of grind the game out and kind of deal two arcane damage, three arcane damage, and kind of get you with those. <clears throat> yeah, so if you're missing a critical mass of blue non-attacks and ice cards, mm -hmm. you're kind of losing a lot of value just from your built-in hero ability. So uh, you might want to look for some other hero to play in your pool if you don't have a good amount of blue and ice cards. Exactly. Um, yeah, so moving on, we can go to Dromai and why uh, why I thought that it didn't work. Actually, I, mm. I actually think Dromai had a pretty good pool. I had four total dragons, um, and one of them being Kyloria, which is a really good uh, a dragon. It, it'll cost one, yeah. and its stat lines are four attack, two defense. Um, and we can um, I can switch it here. You'll have to right click and change the state, but if you'd like to do that, uh, but it'll oh. have. Yeah, <laughs> it's really nice. good. By the way, uh, TTS hack, if you're trying to play with the UPR cards, that's how you get the stats of the dragon. <laughs> um, cool. So that's 4-2, and if it hits, you'll get to steal an item from the opponent. Uh, but much better than that, if you don't steal an item, you get to draw a card. Um, hmm. so that's why I think Calorie is a really good dragon to look out for in your pool. Yeah, um, 4 we damage breakpoint, really of course, very good for that too. Super good. Uh, we'll also have the Aether Ash Wings that you can summon throughout the game. You'll see card mm -hmm. effects that will summon the Aether Ash Wings. And as I mentioned er earlier, the reason Dromai is really good into Islander is because they naturally have Arcane Barrier 1. So if you can amass about 3 or 4, actually I will say 3 Aether Ash Wings, uh, and Dromai doesn't have any good Singe to really uh, ping them down, um, mm -hmm. you can really block out most of what the Islander's damage is doing, and they won't be able to get through your health, and you can just ping them down. Because uh, poppers uh, for Phantasm are kind of um, kind of few and far between. There's only only a few yeah. in the set. Um, yeah. Uh, so other than this here, there's nothing too exciting. There was nothing other than the dragons. The kind of cards were not really exciting for me to go into Dromai. Um, I think one of the key cards that you want to be looking at is Sweeping Blow. Sweeping Blow is a common mm. that just says, for one, create an Ash Tokens. Uh, you can't really guarantee in seal that you have a lot of red cards to pitch to create Ash Tokens with Dromai's ability. So yeah. getting free Ash in, with that kind of effect is very useful. So that's a key card that I would look out for in sealed. Yeah, so I think we might... Yeah, so with Dromai's ability, like Steven said, you, if you pitch a red, you create an Ash. And if mm -hmm. you've played a red, your dragons get go again, so... Yeah, having the extra cards that create ashes and transform ash wings, um, I think is going to be quite necessary. I think most of the dragons, if not all, all of the dragons are rare or higher. So mm -hmm. in sealed, you have 12 chances because each pack comes with uh, two rare or higher cards. 
to Correct. get dragons, which means your main win con is going to be actually the Ash Wings. So if you're yep. looking at your draw my pool and you don't have a very good amount of cards that create those Ash tokens and Ash Wings, mm -hmm. um, you might want to look at other heroes unless maybe you have a good amount of these big phantasm attacks and ways to give them go again or some of the actual go again attacks like sweeping blow maybe you don't have a bunch maybe you're not even going to make an ashwing deck but you have a bunch of sweeping blows and a bunch of like these senapai cards um like yeah. steven said with phantasm poppers being um hard to find in this set uh you might be able to make something like that but true yeah i that think it, with the main mechanics being the dragons um it looks like you had only two sweeping blows you had one rake the embers um, yep. Dust up can create an ash, but only uh, if it hits, yep. and then uh, transform it into an aether ash wing. And even the red one, well, the red one is a nice breakpoint of four, but um, mm -hmm. it doesn't have, have going as either. well. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't have going as well. So it has to be kind of like an end of the chain kind of attack if you're yeah. trying to do something, or if like you block with all three of your cards and then you just go dust up for four uh, with a with red dust up for four. It, it is kind of a it is fine as a play. Um, we can talk a little bit about the silken form right there. Mm -hmm. um, it can, it's really interesting. Um, and then we can go back to uh, Icelanders equipment as well. Uh, but the silken form uh, first, it has the instant where you can destroy it and then create, uh, transform one of your ash into ash wings. Yeah. Um, well, what's interesting about that is actually the other part as well is the quell. So what you can do in your opponent's turn is that you can pitch to quell to stop some damage. And since, uh, Quell says that it'll destroy the armor piece at the end phase. You mm -hmm. can still, before the turn ends, use the instant ability to, on top of you all the damage you prevented, transform your ash wing, your ash into an aether ash wing. So you can get like both yeah. effects at the same time, which I think is a really good design for like uh, an effect well, yeah. for both effects. It's actually yeah, really it has cool. good built-in synergy of Quell costing one. So mm -hmm. you can pitch a red to quell something to create an ash and then use silken form to create an ash wing. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a nice kind of built in thing to watch out for. You can do it without any built up ash. Um, but yeah, even having this equipment, uh, it's not the end all be all for the hero looks like. So um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need the equipment, uh, but mm -hmm. it, it definitely helps. Um, mm -hmm. So going a little bit back to Icelander Recommend, Conduit of Frostburn is kind of the same way in which it has an effect, and then you can also have Quell. So yeah. uh, if you get to, it's a little harder to line up because creating Ash for Dromai is much easier, but freezing a card, which it says right here, uh, you can give an Arcane Damage uh, card an effect that says when this deals Arcane Damage to a hero, destroy a frozen card in their mm -hmm. arsenal. Uh, fr freezing cards was actually not a common effect. There's only one, and as long as I didn't pull any of them, I believe. Oh, there is one here, Icebind. Icebind, Icebind is a common uh, that deals arcing damage and freezes the the arsenal. So you mm -hmm. actually could get it to work out. I see I only have one, and maybe you have quite a few of these Icebind cards. You could make Frostburn work really well on top of the quell that it has. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, we also have Spare Spellfire Cloak here, which is a nice uh, wizard equipment. It has Arcane Barrier 1, which is great for the Icelander Mirror, uh, mm -hmm. but it also has an instant uh, where you can destroy it and gain a resource, but you can only activate this ability on an opponent's turn. Uh, it really can help you kind of fix the math on some of your attacks where you want to use, maybe you have a two-cost uh, blue in your arsenal, um, and then you have your Waning Moon, which also costs two. It kind of mm -hmm. helps you fix the math there. I would say that's the best use case for Spellfire Cloak in like non-Icelander Mirrors. I think uh, in Icelander Mirror, you kind of want to uh, keep it up as long as possible because you don't want to not have the arcing barrier uh, for some of the effects. Um, yeah, so those are the, the equipment up here. Uh, so next, I do want to talk about real quick, uh, just about the common equipment cycle, mm -hmm. uh, which is the quelling equipment. So yeah. there is one for each slot, and they all have quell one. Um, I think personally that quell is a great mechanic in general to kind of protect you in certain breakpoint situations um, because you can use quell of one equipment during the entire turn uh, before it actually breaks so if you yeah. pitch a blue into it uh, during or the first thing to quell one you can still have two floating resources to quell one two more times on two different uh, damage that you were going to take um, yeah. 
I so, do want to mention. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say you do have to do it on separate instances of damage. That's probably what you're gonna mention right <laughs> right after yeah. that too. But <laughs> yeah. so so I mean, luckily, Phi goes wide. Dromai goes wide with dragons. Mm -hmm. Icelander generally, I don't know if they're going wide, but if you have an, an instance of arcane barrier and they do uh, one arcane source from arsenal and then their their weapon, that's two pieces. So two of them mm -hmm. can be quelled, and then your last resource probably can just go towards arcane barrier. So quell mm -hmm. one at least turns your blue into a block three. Like say you have yep. like um, blues that block two, uh, like your like a blue cold yeah. snap or something, you can upgrade it to a three block. And also, like mm -hmm. Steven said, hit those breakpoints. Um, and the annoying, like the Aether Ashwings, they're hitting you for one damage each by going wide. If you can True. stop each one of those with just a blue, you can stop three of them. That's super powerful. But you can't, yep. yeah, you cannot stack it on one instance. You can't pitch like one blue to stop three arcane or like three physical mm -hmm. from a single instance. So it is, a, it is yep. balanced in that sense. Uh, and I know the. Um, and this is also going to be a little bit important. So with Dromai, Dromai really wants to pitch reds. And mm -hmm. you could say that a strategy that you could do if you're Dromai going first is pinch a bunch of, pitch a bunch of reds to you, the Quell equipment to be able to uh, create mm -hmm. ash. But the thing about Quell is that it works like Arcane Barrier in the sense that you'd have to be in the motion of receiving the damage for the prevention effect to kind of activate and you'll be able to pitch into it. So okay. Quell, Quell is arcing damage. So Quell is arcing barrier for every damage type, I want to say. Uh, so in the way that yeah. the rules work with Quell. Um, nice. There is but a even if you had, that work that way. Like if your opponent was coming in with just one damage, you could Quell multiple times, or you can only Quell once per instance of damage. So it's, yes, so you can only prevent it of that source. If you have two Quell equipment, then you could pay two, technically, to prevent yeah. two of that one source that you're getting dealt with. But you can only mm. quell one total damage with quell one per source. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, there's nothing too fancy about the Sash of Sandikai, but if you yeah. want to read it real quick, you can destroy Sash of Sandikai to gain a resource, but you can only activate it if you played a red card that turn. Um, yeah. It's a draconic equipment, so both Dramai and Fi can use it. Um, I think that the Quelling Robe is generally much better um, for Dromai. And if you have Sash of Sandikai, then I think Fi would be happy to have it uh, more often than not. Uh, Makes sense. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I think that was a good overview of like their general mechanics. And uh, at least uh, you were a little bit lacking on Blues and Ices, and you were a little bit lacking mm -hmm. on Ash Generation. So uh, given that we were lacking in those two areas, let's see the area that we were not lacking in, which was Phi. Mm -hmm. Boom. Phi. So uh, Boom. this was the hero you ended up picking, and tell me about why you picked it. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Phi a little bit here, and let's look mm -hmm. at the hero real quick. So uh, it says here that you may start the game with a Phoenix Flame in your graveyard. So uh, for those in the know that play Flesh and Blood already, it's very similar to Dash, in which mm. you can start with the Phoenix Flame in your graveyard and you can start the deck with technically 29 cards in your deck because the maximum is 30. So it counts towards your 30 card, and then you put it in your graveyard, and then you present it to your opponent to be able to to cut the deck. Um, so you could technically uh, run a 29 card deck, which makes it slightly more consistent. Um, hmm. and, and the Phoenix Flame in your graveyard is great for the second part of this text. So once per turn instant, you get paid three toll resources and return a Phoenix Flame from your graveyard to your hand. But it does cost one less for each draconic chain link you control. Um, so we usually what you want to want to be doing with Phi is attack with three draconic chain links, then pay zero to get your Phoenix Flame back, and then just add an extra one damage ping. Um, if you want to check out Phoenix Flame uh, down yeah. here, uh, Phoenix Flame has a also a very special text, uh, which is a player may add up to three Phoenix Flame to their deck in an mm -hmm. uprising limited format. I do want to mention that this is a draconic attack. So uh, technically, Dromai can use Phoenix Flames in our deck. Um, yeah. I would kind of advise not putting all three if you do end up uh, playing Dromai. Maybe two is enough. And only if you have enough uh, Phoenix Flame synergies in your Draconic section of your pool. Uh, as, as we'll see here soon, there is a kind of the Draconic section. And they have uh, some of the cards uh, let you search up Phoenix Flame from your deck or even uh, get a Phoenix Flame from your graveyard. Um, 
it's also nice with Dromai in the sense that you can just play it for zero and do zero damage, uh, mm -hmm. and it will allow all your dragons to have go again because you have played a red card. It does work in that regard, but I think yeah. if you're not hurting for red cards, uh, I don't think that you need to play a Phoenix Flame in your Dromai deck. It works Makes fantastic sense. with Bai, though. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about, we talked about Phi and the Phoenix Flame. Uh, as I alluded to earlier about equipment, it's going to be our Helios Mitre, which is our head equipment, which is also a token that even if you don't open it, uh, you can still have it in your um, in your deck. And then it could be like, your free head slot. Uh, this is James nice. White Prophetized free head. Um, so this one, as an instant, you may pay two, and you can prevent the next one damage that will be dealt to your hero by a source of your choice. And then, kind of the similarly to Quell, you can destroy Helios Mitre at the beginning of the end phase. So it's kind of a worse mm -hmm. rate than Quell. You pay two to prevent one instead of one to prevent one. Uh, but it is free. You didn't need to draft it, and it is there. Uh, and it is, very importantly, it is different to Quell. So you can do what I said earlier, where with this card, where in Dramai, if you're going first, you can just pitch four reds, if you have them in your hand, to Helios Mitre. Choose a source, being like your opponent's weapon or your own weapon, doesn't matter. Those are mm -hmm. legal targets for sources, and you can just start the game with four Ash tokens and then just pass a turn. So if you'd really like to do that, then you can definitely do that little trick to ha start the game with a very sizable Ash generation. Yeah, um, that's a really good tip. Uh, other than that, uh, I think it's really good versus Icelander if, you, if they happen to go first because Icelander wants to have an arsenal as soon as possible. Uh, since there's no really arcing barrier in the set, uh, it's a really easy way to prevent uh, all the damage that they're coming in for, unless it's like gigantic, like uh, five damage or something like that. Still yeah. preventing, like pitching your whole hand, turn zero uh, versus Icelander is, and breaking your Helios Mitre, turn zero is totally fine and an acceptable uh, use of your cards and resources. Um, you don't want to get let them get that advantage in the, in the game, for sure. Makes total sense. Um, Let's see. So about the sealed pool. So I got a lot of really good draconic ninja cards and just base draconic attacks and kind of red cards here. Um, as you can see at top here, I put all my great uh, red cards. And uh, other than the draconic ninja cards, I'm going to talk about really first about the draconic attacks. Uh, okay. Technically, Dromai uh, could use these as well. So it's going to have breaking point, which has the rupture mechanic, which the rupture mechanic. It says if this card is played as chain link four or higher, it has an extra effect. Um, so yeah, so it's a it's much easier I think in sealed or uh, Phi to really get the rupture effect going. Yeah. Um, but with the Aether Ash Rings that Romai can make, uh, they really can rack up the chain links and make rupture somewhat easy for her as well to um, to make work. Um, the other draconic attacks that I have here, I, I opened two Fling Call Awakenings, uh, and these are the cards. One of the cards that synergize very well with the Phoenix mm. Flames, which says that yeah. if you attack with it, if you played another red card, you may search your deck for a Phoenix Flame. Um, you're always playing three and five, so searching one up and dealing one free damage works really, really well. Um, and then there's another card that I didn't open uh, that allows you to get the Phoenix Flame from your graveyard, but you know it's it's really good as well. I think if you have uh, if you have enough Phoenix Flame synergy in your Dramai, you're good with uh, putting them in. If you're yeah. Fi, put them in definitely. You're always going to have Fe uh, Phoenix Flame in your deck. They they are one damage thing. They're really annoying. Uh, they just kind of poke your opponent down uh, without a problem. Yeah, the Phoenix um, Flame does so much for your Fi synergy. Would you say that Flame Call Awakening? I, I might be jumping the gun here, but is, mm -hmm. is this probably one of the best cards you could find in your pool that can make you lead towards a five pool? Because Phoenix Flame, you start with three mm -hmm. Phoenix Flames. One of them is already in your graveyard, so you have two of them in your deck. If you can yeah. filter that out of your deck and make your card pool generally stronger and also mm -hmm. get an extra ping on that one turn, I think you're you're doing really good because this is also like very on rate. Like you're you're paying one for three with go again. Generally, a mm -hmm. card with no effect for three with go again costs zero. So you're paying one extra resource, but that goes towards your Phoenix Flame, which not only does one damage with go again, it also filters your deck, but it also yep. turns on your further chain link things and your other Phoenix Flame synergy, which I'm about, I'm sure you're going to talk about. But I just wanted to nail home how strong Flame Call Awakening is in, in sealed formats. Yep. 
and it is just a common as well. I think all yeah. the draconic cards, most of them that are really good with uh, Phoenix Energy are at a common. I just happen to just open these two. Mm -hmm. um, and very interesting as well, draconic cards only come in red. They don't come in any other color. Um, oh. I think it's quite interesting for as a, as a thing for the set. Um, yeah. Another card that I have over here in the corner, I'm going to just move it over to the right side. It's called Stoke the Flames. It's another one that has a little bit of synergy. It can get... I don't like it all that much because it can get stuck uh, or stopped. Um, it says, when Stoke the Flame hits, you may return a Phoenix Flame from your graveyard to your hand. If you do, Stoke the Flame gains go again. Um, hmm. I know it's four is a nice break point, but uh, you kind of have to pick and choose if you have this card when you kind of want to throw it out to really want to make your opponent block it. Um, if they've already, I think if they've already used uh, Quell in the turn, I think you don't want to attack with Stoke the Flames, and you want to kind of save mm. it when like they're a little bit more open to being, uh, you know, kind of getting like in an awkward situation where they have to block, or else the chain link gets even longer. Um, yeah, uh, and then we have one more card here, Draconic. It is Rise Up. I think uh, it's best in Phi. I think as uh, it is a Dromai and Phi specialization, but I think mm -hmm. it's best in Phi because it says. That it has the the cool little rupture mechanic, and it says if, if you do have rupture, it has dominate and plus X, where X is twice the number of Phoenix Flames you control. So if you played at least one Phoenix Flame, this will be coming in for five dominate. If you have two, that's seven dominate, which is a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you can get that going with your inflame and your fi ability and all that good stuff, you can definitely get that rise up to do um, massive uh, amounts of damage. Um, Let's see, more Phoenix Flame Synergy. We have here the Rise from the Ashes, which is actually a Draconic Ninja card. It just says that your next Draconic Ninja action gets plus three at red. This one actually does have a cycle. Um, and the second line is, you may return a Phoenix Flame from your graveyard to your hand. So in the kind of the middle of the game, where you actually have two Phoenix Flame in your graveyard, you can actually do this one, get a Phoenix Flame, and then do your chain, get the other Phoenix Flame with Vi's ability, and then just keep going with your huge attack chain from there. Hmm. Um... Another interesting one, which I don't think is that powerful, is this Flame, Flameborn Retribution. It's a nice one for three go again. I think it's it's not a good rate, but it does block for two, which is also not very good. But if you already receive damage and you block with it, you get to kind of replace it with a Phoenix Flame from your graveyard. So you get to block for two and you have a free, uh, hopefully zero for one damage uh, coming back to your turn. So if you're yeah. kind of stuck in that situation, you kind of at least get an attack out of it. Uh, after taking some damage um let's see everything else here seems to be kind of standard i think the only other one that i really want to talk about is the equipment over here the heat wave so it's is, it is another i just noticed that all three uh common equipments for each one are on the arm piece that i have quill <laughs> yeah uh, and they'll have an extra effect uh this one's a bit more awkward because um quell is something that you do on your opponent's turn while the instant of this ability which says Phoenix Flames, you control gate plus one until end of turn. You want to do it on your turn. Mm -hmm. So this, the use of this is going to really depend on how the game is going. If you are more on, if you're defending a lot more, which you don't want to be as five, uh, but if you happen to be, uh, you can pay for it with Quell. But if you're if you're being the aggressor and you can get out a lot of Phoenix Flames in a turn, you can definitely break it to do that uh, break point. Um, yeah. I actually had two games in which I attack with Phoenix Flame three times, so this ended up being a break for three total damage, and that's actually a really good rate. Yep, that's insane. Um, in limited. Um, then, let's see. So talk about the other cards. I had a lot of really good just Draconic Ninja cards that could just have uh, free go again. Um, zero for three here with uh, Brand Cinderclaw. One for three go again. One for... Four go again with Soaring Strike. Some mm -hmm. minor on hit effects. I didn't really use the on hit effects that well, mostly because most of my cards had go again. Uh, for yeah. example, Soaring Strike here, it says that I can uh, banish an attack action card from my hand with cost zero or less from the number of draconic chain links and again gain go again and play it this turn. Um, as you can see, my pool really had all the go again I really wanted. Uh, the only one that didn't really have going in was going to be this flex here uh, on the top right. Uh, so this one can do hmm. three different things. This card is actually very interesting. It is a rare, and I opened two of them at red. Um, so nice. I usually what it did with it is I ended the chain as a nice zero for four. If you're really kind of on the back foot, you can just make it a two for six uh, just on your turn, and that could be all you do. Um, but you can also activate this effect while defending. So if 
somehow you're facing Hedromai and they have a super scary dragon, you can defend with this and then pump it to six and the dragon will die because of Phantasm. So flex red is actually very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. What do we got? We have uh, the yellows are pretty standard. Uh, we have quite a few blues. And I think for Phi, you want about eight or so blues because the weapon does cost two resources to swing. And mm. if you are weaving your turns when uh, by doing an attack, swinging with your weapon, uh, a draconic attack at that, at the first chain link, and then swinging your weapon as the second chain link, uh, and then you only need one more draconic attack to get the Phi ability to be free, and then you get the Phoenix Flame and you get to do more chip damage in that way. It's just a really good sequence that you can do during your turn. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the last things I want to talk about is some of the generics that I ended up with. Um, by the way, if you do count here, you'll count 31 cards. Uh, at the time where I made the deck, I did know about the thing where you could have 29 cards. It's just that I am a really indecisive person. <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll usually, sometimes in a seal or something, I play 31 cards because I, I can't think of cutting anything at all. Yeah. Um, so, and then I really wanted some extra blue. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which I think is the amount kind of that you want going for you uh, in this situation. Uh, yeah, I think so I might puts you at a little bit less than one third. So you're generally yep. going to be having it definitely a blue per turn. And it's yep. not like, Actually, it's not like Briar where your whole turn can function off zeros. Like you said, you do need at least a blue. So. Yep. And I want to say that I did it like this. I think my brothers in arm was in instead of the Oasis respite blue. So I have mm -hmm. seven, but I think my yellow count was actually quite big. Uh, and most of our, my attacks cost zero or one. I actually didn't. There's a few uh, draconic ninja attacks that are common that cost two. And I actually just noticed that I don't have any of them in my pool. So that's probably why I was also uh, <laughs> quite strong <laughs> in, in yeah. really kind of like pushing in the damage and that the resource curve actually worked really well. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it about the main stuff that I did. Um, so yeah, the equipment, the sideboard, right, the sideboard hmm. area. So I did have some cards over here on the left. Um, so I have healing bombs. So these are the generics I kind of like pulled. I have a healing bomb red, a red oasis provide a blue, some trade ins, a healing bomb, and the strategic planning. Uh, I do want to give a little light on strategic planning. I think it's a really interesting card that can kind of shut down a little bit of what Phi is doing by putting the Phoenix Flame at the bottom of their deck. Oh, yeah. um, I think that is an interesting way to play the card, but I think that as a one cost, I think it's a little bit too low impact uh, to be putting it kind of in the main deck to kind of stop what they're doing. Because you are paying one resource to stop what they're doing for a little bit. And if they have cars yeah. that can search the Phoenix Flame from their deck, uh, then you're kind of negative on a card, and you actually didn't do any damage. So I think it's too low tempo of a card to be putting in your deck in any of the three. I think you might be able to um, get around it more with uh, Icelander, especially out of blue, because you can play it at instant speed, and mm. then you can Waning Moon after that. Um, I also want to mention that you don't want to do this turn zero, because technically they can pitch in response to uh, their ability to get it in their hand anyway. Um, and then the turns after that, um, yeah, they, they have to pay three, but uh, you can still get it in your hand after uh, turn, yeah. turn zero. And then the turns after that, they might be fine with the fact that you just spent one resources to just put a Phoenix Flame at the bottom of their deck. Yeah. Um, Would you say that the red version of this could be considered to be playable in Dromai against Phi? Since Phi is a little bit tougher matchup for Dromai, you're starting your turn with a red, so your go again is turned on, and mm -hmm. it costs one, so you pitching a red is turned on. I feel like there's a little bit of synergy there. It's it's quite possible. I think what really Dromai wants is the zero-cost red attack, so you can block with mm. three cards, then play a zero-cost red attack, or a zero-cost red card of any kind yeah. that you can play, and uh, kind of turn on the rest of your Ash Wings to swing out. Um, yeah. So costing blue does make it a little bit awkward, but it definitely has some usage. I think you put it in if you think that the rest of your deck can uh, function in a defensive way for the for the other matchups. Um, but other than that, I think it's just too slow. Uh, gotcha. Looking at other two cards here, are trade in. I, I pulled a blue and a yellow. Uh, they're kind of in the cycle of like promise of plenty or or what other effects like this happen. Um, the, there's a scout card that lets you look at your opponent's hand. You know, it's as you just say, yeah. if you've played this card from Arsenal, it has go again. 
Uh, trade in is a fine effect. You can discard a card and then draw a card. I think it's also kind of too low impact for the effect mm. that it has. Um, especially you don't want it in Icelander. Um, I think your hands don't need to be fixed too much with um, Dromai. Maybe you want to put it in Arsenal and then maybe you can fix your hand to have a red so you can swing out. Um, in Fi, maybe you can use it to discard a Phoenix Flame that you don't want because you have another recursion of Phoenix Flame and then mm. uh, draw back up. Um, but I think it's too low impact. And if you if you can avoid putting in your deck, I would say don't do it. But if you obviously if you need slots and you need to put something in, it's better than a crack bobble. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, lastly, here's a blue healing bomb. Um, so I also put a red healing bomb. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan, and I said it in the last video probably when with the Tales of Fire one. I am a rejuvenate enjoyer. Uh, I love <laughs> cards that just I can play them and I heal for three. And especially in in a twenty health uh, game of Blitz, fan freaking tastic. I yeah. will put it in my deck all the time. Unfortunately, the blue is zero heal one. It's a non attack action. It doesn't have go again, so it'll cost you uh, a big old action point to be able to play out, which is a big no in all these circumstances. Um, so the blue, if you need, I think if you're hurting for blues, uh, I think it's not terrible. Just put healing bomb in. Uh, late game, mm -hmm. you may be getting a life will save you. Uh, it also works fine with Icelander. You can play it from Arsenal for free during the opponent's turn, and then you can Waning Moon for three damage. So that's like a four ish swing um, with dealing three damage and gaining one life. It's like not terrible, but I think you rather have different effects as well um, for that kind of synergy. Um, speaking of, Healing Bomb Red. I love it. Love it. Um, so the deck pretty much stays the same versus Fi and uh, Dromai. In Icelander, you want to take out the brother, what I did, actually, because <laughs> this is not a deck deck, it's just what I pulled. Um, I took out the brother's Narns for kind of this package for uh, Icelander. So these brother's Narns, I think, are fantastic uh, in any deck when you're defending against a hero that does physical damage. It says mm -hmm. when you defend with brother's Narns, you can pay one resource, and if you do, it gains two. Um, so imagine pairing this also with Quell, uh, yeah. so you can just kind of add two of the breakpoint to Brother and Arm and have some resources to use Quell, or in Icelander you have some extra resources to use your blue cards in your arsenal, or maybe Waning Moon, or something along those lines. The, just Quell and the heroes uh, that are available in this limited format make Brothers and Arm a really good limited card um and very interesting to use uh another similarly used card is going to be this oasis respites right here um they also cost one so they also synergize well with just having floating resources for quell or maybe from using brothers and arms at well as well it just says prevent the next four damage that will be dealt to your hero during a source of your choice and if you have less life than your then your opponent this is each other hero but just your opponent in this case you also gain a life so this is a one for five trade if you're lower on life. The others are one for three and one for four in uh, blue and yellow, respect, uh, respectively. Um, so uh, with um, what is it? Icelander coming to you with big arcane damage, um, you can uh, preventing four of a source is big game. It's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so before we uh, close out, do you want to give in a little bit of a kind of summary of at least your six games? Or Yes, I can do that. Uh, there were some interesting things. Oh, this is the perfect time for me to mention one of the great ways to go 6-0 is to understand the mechanics of the heroes. And if you can, kind of like be oh, yeah. knowledgeable about uh, what they can do and maybe take a quick gander at the re at the release notes um they, they'll tell you uh what you can and can't do um and then if you're worried about some specific rulings i do want to mention that one of my games was one off the back of an opponent uh accidentally not knowing um a card interaction i'm just gonna hmm. recreate it right here because i happen to have the cards my opponent went ahead and played rise from the ashes and then immediately followed it up with a Searing Amber Blade. Uh, as you can see here, Searing Amber Blade says, if this, if you control two or more Draconic Chain Links, Searing Amber Blade mm. has to go again. My opponent unfortunately thought that playing this non-attack action card 
counted as chain link one, and then they could see the Ember Blade for three with go again. Uh, the way it actually works is that when you play a non-attack action card, it actually just goes into the graveyard, and then after that, um, you actually start your attacks, and that will be chain link. In this case, it was chain link one. Um, yeah. After I told my opponent that, they just I took the three damage that they ended their turn. Uh, unfortunately, I was like at 13, and they were like eight, so they really needed to have that push in the in the fire race to really. Uh, pressure me but since they were unable to pressure me i kind of just won the game off of that of the back of that um and then after the game yeah the uh, the opponent my opponent actually told me that they've been doing this all day uh to all their opponents or to like uh, a few of their opponents so yeah. it's also important for you to know how the mechanics works to not accidentally have your opponent um do stuff like this and i and i know that my opponent was not doing it in malice uh it's right. just that they also didn't understand how the chain links worked and it seems like the some of the people they were playing against also didn't understand how the chain links worked um but that's uh, that was an interesting thing that happened in one i think that was game five so that was a really important game for me <laughs> because mm -hmm. uh going to game six means i could uh for example talk to my opponent and maybe split the box if i wanted to um because you can't you can do that in flesh and blood <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so that was one of the games. The other games, I, I played, I think, four, five, no, three five mirrors. Mm. Uh, I played one Dromai and two Islanders, I want to say. Um, wow, pretty good yep, spread. It, it, was a, it was definitely a fine spread. Um, so this leads me into talking a little bit about uh, some of the matchups. I think if, you're, if you are Fi and you're playing against Fi, it's an aggro race, and you want to go second. Um, hmm. That's just my take on on that one. If you are Fi and the opponent is Icelander, you hopefully want to go first, chip in some damage so they don't have a good arsenal target. Uh, and then I would say use your Quell and Helios Mitre kind of aggressively if they happen to go first, because you don't want uh, the, the Icelander player to uh, chip you down, because they will kill you with arcane damage. Because... Um, Especially if you don't have the ninja boots, there are some ninja boots in the set that have arcane barrier one. Mm -hmm. Even with that, it's not super great. It's not a very impactful. It's just arcane barrier one. It's not going to defend against uh, any of the big attacks that are throwing out. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, so you still want to try and aggro them out, but you do have to be wary and keep more blues in your hands instead of attacking with them. So if you're able to, maybe side in more blues versus Islander, because uh, uh, she will definitely tax you quite aggressively depending on the pool that they have um and then with Fi against Romai, uh like i mentioned that's a matchup you kind of generally want to win uh, or you can win uh, but i think one of the key things is don't be afraid to use your phoenix flames to clear the small mm. dragon um it's a good idea to just not chip in one damage to Dromai to kind of prevent the Dromai from having more things to do in uh her turn uh, with chipping in with your one damage ping attacks to Phoenix Flames. And if yeah. they get out a big dragon, I would say it's really a good idea to just get rid of the big dragons uh, as soon as possible. Um, there are some that you can leave on the board. Like I want to say like Uvia, which is a 1-6. Those ones are, That one's a little bit harder to kill with 6 uh, health. Um, but I think all the other ones are pretty fine game to destroy if you can kill them because it's kind of one of Dromai's win conditions. Yeah, you're trading your renewable resources in your weapon swing and your Phoenix Flames for their non-renewable mm -hmm. resources, which are their ash token or their their um ash wings and their other dragons. Exactly. Exactly. So you're definitely winning that trade there. Exactly. Um other than that, nothing too specific. Going second against five, very good. Uh learning the rules, uh being wary of Icelander. Yeah, that's kind of how my matches went. I think my sixth match was the most interesting in the way that it was Icelander uh, for my last game. And I just was, you know, a 5 0 Islander, you're expecting a lot of disruption. Um, but, you know, it's still a card game. So mm -hmm. I think my opponent, unfortunately, did not draw the uh, disruption at the right time. So I was able to just kind of uh, roll away with the game with just my, uh, my very uh efficient zero for two zero for three one for four etc cetera, etc cetera, attacks yeah. that i had available and then phoenix planes for one and probably for three i was just like going really ham with damage against the icelander definitely well i'm gonna switch uh, us back here and zoom into our faces uh -huh. but uh 
I think that was a super good good overview of at least how your pool went. Uh, big congratulations mm-hmm. on going 6-0 for the second time in Vegas at the world premiere. <laughs> That's super exciting. Yep. Um, but yeah, with with all of that being said, what how how are you feeling about Uprising as a sealed format? Like just your general closing thoughts. How's it feel? How did it feel to play balance wise? Anything like that? Mm-hmm. I think uh, it was easy. So I do want, yeah, I do want to mention there were 10 undefeated players. Eight of them were Fi, two of them were Islander. Mm. Uh, and I think that was mostly due to the fact that it was day zero, uh, or day negative 14, I want to say. <laughs> uh, and Fi was the aggro deck. And piloting Fi, it was just much easier if you knew uh, Flesh and Blood. If you, uh, if you didn't know Flesh and Blood as well, it was also quite easy. And I think Dromai and Icelander require a more specific set of cards to be quite good into the field. I think you can pull them and, and get it done, but it's just way more specific. And Fi can just kind of um, be happy with like a 0 for 2 go again, Swing yeah. Blade, if Phoenix Flame, pass the turn. I think it, it, can, be, it can be that easy for, uh, for Fi. Uh, but I think it is quite balanced. I think the Quail is fantastic. Um, I think the 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 fact that there's token equipment and the extra Phoenix Flame tokens is I think super good for a limited format. Um, and then obviously I want a box, so I was able to use a box to draft. Uh, so for drafting, which is a little bit separate, I think is also really well. I think it's just really well done. I think it's I'm yeah. I'm excited for uprising a lot, and I think I'm really high on it being uh, my favorite uh, set in limited so far, and not just because I did really good on it. <laughs> that's awesome yeah that's super exciting to hear i think uh lss just nails it home with their limited formats all the time uh sure. especially hearing that sealed was was a fun experience i think some people mm-hmm. had a bad taste in their mouth from tales of aria sealed depending on sure. um the way you played it but um sealed uprising being fun is awesome i'm looking forward to the pre-release hopefully everyone out there watching um gets some good tips from this video that they can bring to their pre-release um if you found the video helpful go ahead and give a like and subscribe if it suits you and uh comment on what hero from uprising you're super excited to play at the pre-release or in constructed uh we're definitely going to be having a lot of constructed coming out uh for this set Mm -hmm. there's just so many so many avenues you can bring i know some some players on the team are excited about the cards they got for old heroes like uh sean's looking at katsu and People are mm-hmm. looking at Prism as always. People are looking at Reinar. Reinar got some interesting stuff. So yeah, we're excited about all the stuff that Uprising brought us in Constructed and Sealed. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching and uh, tune in next time. See ya. Peace.